Okay, today I'm going to tie the 17 year cicada. I first tied this pattern 17 years ago, the last time it hatched. I was inspired because the usual cicadas we see are the ones that look like a big green and black housefly that are white underneath. But this year, or that year, we had a whole bunch of these little black and burnt umber looking ones. And so I tied a pattern and was quite successful with it. And well, here it is, 17 years later, we're back at it. So I decided to make a video on how to tie this particular pattern. So starting with the Mustad 3366. So what you'll need for this is some craft foam. I prefer the sticky back piece of craft foam. <clears throat> and you cut yourself a strip of it, about a quarter inch wide. On one end, you're going to cut a point. So, just like that. Doesn't have to be tapered too much. On the other end, you're going to cut a longer side bevel, like that. All right, first thing you need to do is get your thread on there. And then you need to pull off the sticky back. All right, then sticky side up, we're going to tie down the short bevel right on top. Maybe a quarter inch back from the eye. This will make the head of the fly. And you're going to cut off your piece with, it doesn't really matter, just, you know, get a little extra on there. Now, Obviously, we're going to wind this around from the back forward, but what happens is it begins to make a big open gap. So we're going to fill that gap before we get there. So what I'm going to do is start with this in the down position like that, kind of stick it on there, and then make a wrap. Finishing with the overlap on top, just like eh, one good layer. You can go a little fatter if you want. Cut off the excess, pat that down. Okay, that's kind of the thorax there. And the next thing we're gonna do is tie on the legs. So for the legs, I'm using this dark orange micro chenille. It's kind of got little kinks in it from being on this card which I actually like because it makes the legs look bent, at least up until they wash out a little. So the length of your legs is not a big deal because we're going to trim them back to whatever size you want them to be. So toward the front of this fat lump, you can see I'm not tying it too tight or else I'll smash all that down. Tie on some, tie on a leg, tie on one, maybe on a slightly different angle. Cut off some excess. And I'm going to tie on a third one, across it the other way. Okay, then just tie that down as much as you think it needs tied down in whatever way you see fit. Again, we can move them later, so it's not a big deal. So, to tie the abdomen, we're going to pull these legs up, st stick them on the sticky foam. There you go. Yeah. Now they're out of the way for you. So again, loose wraps. Okay, and get to the back. All right. So I'm going to start this with the beveled side facing to the back of the fly. The reason is, is if I had it beveled the other way, it would stack up in a way that looks unnatural. So you use the bevel facing toward the back of the fly. Just tie the tip down. And wind your four, your cord to the front, and then you can begin to make the wraps. And then just you know come back a little bit toward the back on every wrap. Whatever spacing seems correct to you. So now you can see 
we're starting to get the, the gap in the middle. It's, it's a hole, it's, you know, it's hollow inside. That's why we get to this filler right here. Before we make our last wrap of the fly, which will encompass the part we already put down and the part we just put down, we make our last wrap up here. See the similar thickness there. Before we get this last wrap, we're gonna put some wings on. And the reason I'm putting them on now, even though a fly or a cicada does not have its wings tucked under a layer of its abdomen, we're doing it for structure because I'm sure you've cast a fly where the wings are sticking straight out and it catches a lot of wind and they get abused easily. So I'm going to use a natural pheasant feather so I don't want them to be destroyed and I want them to poke straight to the back like the natural resting position of the wings on a cicada. So for that, I'm going to use some pheasant feathers. Just happen to have a skin. It doesn't really matter what feather you use. Whatever you like, I'm picking two of those feathers. And I'm gonna strip opposite sides of each. If you wanted to be more precise, you could pick them from opposite sides of the skin. I'm not too concerned about it. And then pull off some of the extra fluff. So it looks like that. And you can cut off the excess. There's one wing. So now I need to do one from the opposite side. All right, so to place this wing, I'm just gonna lay it on the side and then wrap the top around it. Lay it on here to what I think looks like a natural good distance to the back of the fly. Yeah, I got a little too much here, I think. You don't need as much of that in the back because you're trying to give the appearance of it having wings from underneath. The fish is not going to see this fly from the top side. So, I'm gonna take the uh, foam, hold this in the position I think looks good, and wrap this around. If you don't like it, you can always reposition it. There, I think that looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to do the other side. Get it to where I think it looks paired to the other one nicely. And then wrap this down. So I like to come around completely on the bottom side and cut it off even on this side. I got this much waste. There we go. And if you don't like it, you can move these around a little bit. I think that looks pretty natural. All right, I'm gonna make a few wraps to tie that down. Not too many. We also need to cut off the excess on the uh, feather, so. All right, now I need to separate out the legs. Then we need something for eyes. What I'm using for eyes is these little straws that I got at Walmart that they were intended to blow up a bunch of water balloons at once, but I use them for making tube flies. So I happen to have some of this in orange, so I'm gonna use this. In the past, I used chenille, a little larger diameter chenille. Cut off a piece, maybe you know, three eighths. And I'm gonna place it just behind where the bevel is. Try and get it what looks like in the middle. If that doesn't look like middle, you can move it. And then I'm gonna fold the head back over it, like this, onto the back of the fly. And then I'm gonna wrap behind the head. You don't wanna pull it too tight. I may have just pulled that one a little tighter than I intended, but. Make a few wraps to hold that in place and then work your way to the front. So obviously this fly is made of a lot of foam, very flexible materials that a fish can abuse and tear apart. And I'd like to catch more than one fish on a fly. So I'm gonna add a fair amount of glue. 
So glue all the obvious spots, put some glue up here on my threads, put a little glue back here, a little glue back here, hold that down, and then I'm going to put some glue on the wings as well because I don't want them to get torn up when I'm casting. So I'm going to kind of glue them down flat to the body. You can see how the foam holds the wing in place, but also a little glue goes a long way. Uh, underneath the fly, Obviously, you're going to glue your knot down here. Just everywhere you think that it could be a little sturdier if it had some. I also like to put some glue on the eyes just to keep it from sliding around in there. That makes it a little too much. And super glue dries solidly and clear. So before you glue your legs in place, obviously you want to position them. Make it look how you think it should look. Like that, spread them out a little bit. I think that looks pretty decent. So I'm gonna add a little glue to those positions. I like to use the bodkin to place glue because the brush applicator is messy and you get glue where you don't want it and then your flies have glued together on the parts that are supposed to be flexible, so. I like to use the bodkin. All right, and there you have it, the 17-year cicada.